You want to get a Forge server? We're going to show you how. First things first, go to the second link down below. That's going to take you here. It's our in-depth guide on installing Forge, which you may be like, well, I want a Forge server. That's awesome. We're going to show you how to do that. But everyone who joins your server needs to go through this guide as well. So you may want to go ahead and send them this. That way they're getting that set up for when you're ready for them to join. Because anyone who joins your server not only has to have a Forge, they just have to have the Forge mods you add to the server installed locally too. It's just how modded servers work, unfortunately. Once you're here, go ahead and click Download Forge to go to the official download page. We want to get the 1.21.10 version, which we can make sure is selected in the left-hand side, and then click Installer. That didn't take you off to add focus for Stop. Don't click anything on this page. Just wait about 10 seconds. And after about 10 seconds, a red Skip Add button will appear in the top right. We want to go ahead and click that skip button in the top right and the download will begin. You may need to keep or save the file depending on your browser and it's 100% safe to do that as long as Forge is in the title. We want to go ahead and minimize our browser and find that Forge file that we downloaded. It's going to be in the downloads folder here. You can just go ahead, right click, open with Java and it will open that up. But what if you don't have Java here? Well, if you don't have Java, you need to get Java 21. It's required for Forge, it's required for servers, so it's definitely required for Forge servers. And we have an in-depth guide that goes over everything you need to know to get it. We also have the jar fix. This will take the jar files like Forge and link them back to Java. But first, get Java, then run the jar fix. Now we can minimize our browser open up this Forge installer by right clicking, clicking open with and Java, and it will open up the Forge installer here. Well, all we've got to do is first install client and click OK. Now, once it's installing, I do want to mention that the server we're making here is not a 24 hour server. It's only up and running when your computer's up and running. On top of that, it's meant for your friends and family because anyone who gets this IP address can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates in addition to be able to DDoS you, which is basically hit your internet offline. On top of that, it's using your own computer's resources, meaning you're going to need a pretty good computer for this to work. But what if you don't want to have to worry about any of that? Well, that's where our hosting provider, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. You can check it out at the first link in the description down below, and it uses new AMD hardware that's meant to run Minecraft servers, and it's super easy to add mods, plugins, and mod packs to the server with one-click mod pack installation. Plus, security is all taken care of, anyone can join the server, you can make it public or private, and on top of that, at Simple Game Hosting, your server is up anytime that you want, 24-7. Plus, there's expert live chat support. Let's say you add a mod to your server, something's not working, you're trying to start, it's just not working. Well, there's expert live chat support there to get your server back online how you want it. So check out Simple Game Host to get the first link in the description down below. The breakdown .xyz slash simple to start your Minecraft server the simple way. Nevertheless, we now have Forge set up and running locally, but that's the first step. Like I said, anyone who joins the server, including you, has to install the client of Forge. So click OK, it'll close out of that. We want to reopen up the Forge installer, and this is where the magic happens with getting the server files. Click Install Server. This red box will appear here. Click the three dots to open up this. Go to Desktop, and then right-click and create a new folder. You can name this anything. I'm going to name it Forge 1.21.10 Server. Go ahead and select that folder and click Open. Now, with it selected here, the red box will go away, so you can click OK. It will now download and install everything you need to get Forge up and running on a Minecraft server. That includes downloading the Forge files, but also the Minecraft server files that we need. So we can see that things are successful here. We can click OK. We can delete this Forge file. We don't need it anymore because everything we need is in that folder on our desktop. Now double click this run.bat file and your server will attempt to start here, but it's going to fail. So you can see, press any key to continue. That's because we now have this eola.txt file and we need to open that and change eula equals false to eula equals true, exactly like that. And then click file, save to make sure things are saved. And that is assuming we agree to the Minecraft eula. Then, if we double click the run.bat, the server's actually going to start now. We can see that because it will generate a world folder. And by the way, don't freak out about modded servers having red in the console. Happens every time. All this is saying is that there's no server.properties and it needs to generate a server.properties file. Makes sense because the server just started. So now we can see that it is done. It is online, but no mods are on the server. You probably want to add some mods. So go ahead and come over here and type stop right like so. Hit enter. It will close out of that properly, making sure everything is saved. And now we can get our mods. Now, most popular places to do that is CurseForge and Modrinth. Both are basically the similar processes for downloading stuff. Just make sure you're downloading the Forge 1.21.10 version of anything you download. We're going to use Waystone. It's one of my favorites because you can go to Files here. Make sure we're grabbing that Forge version we talked about. Right here it is. But if we click on it, this requires another mod. How do you know that? Because we go to Related Projects and we can see Bomb is required here. So we can go ahead and click Download here and the download will begin. But we also need to get Bomb for this to work. 
We're going to do that on Modern, though. But as you can see, we need to keep our save waystones. That'll happen with most mods you want to install. And this process will work on your server, adding them all that, for any Minecraft Forge mod. On Neoforge, we can do the same thing, but I'm going to shortcut a little bit and just search for Waystones. You can filter all of that stuff, but if we go here on Waystones, we can go to the Forge version and we'll see the dependency of Bomb. Of course, we do need to download that because, well, it's required for this mod to work. Make sure we save it. We're good to go. Now, to install these, all you've got to do is move them into your mods folder on your Minecraft server. So here's our Minecraft server folder here, as you can see, and we have a mods folder. Drag and drop them in here. If you remember at the beginning of the video though, I said anyone who joins your server needs these mods installed as well on their own PC. That includes you because sure they're on your computer, but they're on your server on your computer, not in Minecraft. So to do that, we wanna select these, right click on them and click copy. Now we can go back and start our server with that run.bat file. Now with the mods being installed, they'll activate, and we can go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher. In the Minecraft launcher, we want to go to installations. We'll have this Forge installations. Hover over it, click on the folder icon, and this will open up. Here you should have a mods folder. If you don't, go ahead and make one. By the way, this is what your friends need to do. Open up this folder with that icon, and then find their mods folder. Then they'll just open that mods folder, right click and paste any of the mods they want. They'll download them, add them in here, and then play Minecraft with Forge. Once they've done that, things will be good to go, set up, and working great. At this moment, though, you're the only person that can join your server, but I recommend testing things right now by going to multiplayer, clicking add server. You can name this anything, but we're going to name it local connection because only you can use it. And then the IP address or server address here is going to be localhost, all one word exactly like that. Click done, double click, and you'll see us join in here in the background. Things are working. Things are good to go. Waystones will also be active. The easiest way to check that is going to be come over here to opping ourselves with op in your username. That's going to allow you to do things like go into creative, for example, and of course, grab a waystone in our case, and we will be good to go. Things are working with the mods. However, what if you do want your friends to join? You probably do. Well, in that case, what we'll want to do is port forward. That is required for your friends to join. This guide link down below goes over everything you need to know to port forward from start to finish for a modded Minecraft server. It's actually the same process for vanilla and modded with Forge, so you are good to go there. And once you do that, your friends will join with your public IP. But don't worry, that's all explained in this guide. So now you know how to make a modded Minecraft server. Go through port forwarding, your friends will be online, and you will be good to go. We will see you in the next video, and I am out. Peace.